Hi. Okay. Um, to begin with, uh, the magic number is 192. Uh, I'm 192 centimeters tall, or 6'3", um, just to get that clear. Okay, so it's really fantastic to be talking to youth and KL. And uh, I used to give a TEDx talk back in Singapore, my home ground. And uh, the last time I gave a talk, uh, it was about Tara, a solution um, the host was talking about. And essentially, Tara was designed to aid um, patients, the elderly, uh, in getting through stroke rehabilitation. What, what Tara did is to use the Connect to make stroke rehabilitation more accessible, much more engaging, and a lot more affordable. And to show you what Tara did, I would like to share with you a video, and uh, I hope you enjoy. It's more helpful that you can see also the effort from the patient that they're trying to do it and play the game that you want. This is more to share also for us because this one, we don't need, uh, they don't need to hold anything. What if the patient's grip is very weak, so this one more on functional way, so it's easy for us also to assess them with regards to yeah, the range of motion, the movements, and also their hand. Okay. So it was uh, really fun and exp um, you know a very good experience. And um, although since then uh, Tara hasn't gone very far, hasn't improved a lot. Um, because some of the reasons I'll share with you later. I've, I've I've grown a lot as an individual, as an innovator, and there are some experiences that I went through and some lessons I learned from them. And that's why I'm here today. I want to share them with you. Hopefully, it helps you out. So this you know, to, to this day, uh, the reason I'm standing here began uh, somewhere around 2010, where I joined a competition called the Imagine Cup. I'm sure some of you know it. And what the Imagine Cup does is that they encourage students to use technology to build solutions that uh, solve some of the world's toughest problems. You know, the Millennium Goals, eradicating poverty and education, uh, improving education. And so it was a very good competition, but I only had one goal and one reason why I was actually participating. And that was I wanted to represent my country. Because for a very long time, I felt I wanted to know what it feels like to be holding the flag right, and telling the world, hey, I'm from Singapore. right? And so, but the thing is, every time I came back from the competition, my goals changed. And one of the first changes happened in 2010 when I came back from Warsaw and I realized that, you know, it's fun representing my country and stuff, but it's a lot more fun when I was learning, right? I learned a lot more and I decided to value that. So in 2011, I decided to compete again. And when I came back from 2011, right, my objective then was to actually learn as much as I could. When I came back, it suddenly changed again. And uh, what then happened is I, I, I learned that, you know, technology is so impressive. It empowers us youth to actually be able to create change. And so, you see, the thing is that the lesson you can take away from this is that looking forward, right, as young people, we, we don't know what the journey is like, how it will end, right? And so, the, because change is in, inevitable, Everybody will change, you know. Everybody will go through these changes. And so the, what you need to do is to embrace it in a lot of senses and grow with it. So start with that one small idea. You want to impact your community? Go ahead, do it. Maybe you'll change the world, right? So that's the lesson. That's the first lesson I want to bring to you guys. Start small and let it grow with you. Let your goals grow with you. So moving on to the next stage of the competition where we were trying to figure out what is the solution, what do I want to fix. And the thing is that um, every morning, you know, I had this drive, like I was obsessed, I want to represent Singapore, I want to represent Singapore. And then I went in and every morning I wake up and I'm like, okay, what's the solution for the day? Okay, here's my solution. And I'll go ahead and try and apply it to problems. For example, um, I would say, oh, I want to use SMS technologies and uh, hook it up with servers and then try and solve um, logistical issues. 
And then throughout the day, I'll think like, oh, how will this affect um, education? Can it eradicate poverty? And then at the start, it would look like, wow, I am onto something great, right? And then when I do a lot more research on the problem, I realize that, oh, wait, there's a problem here. I cannot fix it. So never mind. And then I realized maybe my approach was wrong because what we are trying to do here is trying to take a solution and trying to fit it into a problem. And that's the wrong way to go about doing it. And it's dangerous, actually. Uh, because one, when you do this, you tend to focus a lot more on the solution rather than trying to find out and learn about what's the problem actually. And one example is this. I had a friend, um, a young guy, and then he said, you know, I want to create change, I want to give back. And he was talking about how he wants to go to Nepal and distribute food and clothes to the poor. And he did that. He went to Nepal, distributed, everything was fantastic. At face value, it seems like he's creating a lot of impact. He went back home, came back the next year. And then he met someone, a villager, and he came up to him and said, hey, uh, are you coming back to distribute food and clothes? And my friend went, yeah, why not? I mean, we're here to help you guys. And then this guy surprisingly said, please go back. Don't, don't, don't do it. And my friend was shocked, okay, why? And uh, then this is what he said. He said that after you guys distributed food and clothes, guys like us, villagers who actually made a living through selling food and clothes, we were impacted, right? We couldn't have business. And you see, so there are very serious consequences that you may overlook if you don't try and understand the problems. And so this leads me to the next lesson, that innovation is not a big bang. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not an aha, eureka moment. It's a gradual process that you have to undergo. Right? And then now the question would be, okay, so how do I go through this process? How do I begin? Well, to me, the first step is to identify a topic that you like to listen or read about. And why is this? Because you see, the fundamental step to learning something begins with either reading about something or listening to someone talk about it. So if you're naturally inclined to learn or read about something, then you would, you would become better at it. You, you spend a lot more time Right? And so, find that topic, learn and read, discuss in forums, read articles, read journals, listen to people talk about it. And so, basically what I'm trying to say is that when you want to innovate, stop thinking of ideas and start learning more about the problems on the ground. And so, it brought me to the next step. So, I've got the idea, I grabbed a group of friends, and then we were, you know, young individuals, ready to change the world. And then we started writing code, doing our pitches, and then we went ahead and to compete. And on the first day of the competition, we got destroyed. Um, what happened is that responses were, oh, um, your presentation is horrible, first. Okay, the second, okay. Um, second is, your solution is confusing, so don't even try. And it really disappointed us, right? And what happened next is that we received an email from one of our lecturers, and he said that, you know, your, your solution may be confusing, but I think there's value in it, and I'm willing to mentor you guys. And we said, okay. And I think to, to today, right, um, that's one of the most important things that has happened, and it has led me to being here. And so, it, it, it taught me a few lessons. This one experience taught me a few lessons. First, it's about failure. You see, failure, you need to be comfortable with it. You need to understand that failure is, it will happen. You will fail a lot more than you will succeed. But take note, I'm not trying to, you need to understand that failure is not the opposite of success. Failure is a step towards success. And that's a very important mentality to have. You see, and like Seth Godin, uh, Seth Godin is a very famous uh, innovator and entrepreneur. And he said, if a failure is not an option, then neither is success, right? So go ahead, be comfortable with failure. Fail a lot. I fail a lot. And there's this saying, right? What's the difference between a master and an apprentice? Can anyone guess? So, okay, here's the answer. The master has failed a lot more times than the apprentice has even started trying, right? So that's the mentality you need to have. It's a very important mentality. So moving on, next, and uh, this is another one. Um, learn to speak the language of the trade, and I don't mean Bahasa Malayu or French or English or Spanish. 
I mean, learn how to speak like the professionals within that industry. If you want to build a solution trying to help healthcare, then learn the clinical terms. Those are very important skills. Because you can, you, know, you can have a solution that will cure cancer, but if you cannot get it across to the guy in the room, then it's all of that is for naught. So learn how to present and talk well, how to convey your message. You know, I spent 100 hours trying to come up with a 20-minute pitch, right? So it's very important. Next, um, and how many of you are parents, mentors, teachers, right? This one is for you. You see, your job in all of this is only one thing. Create an environment where we, as innovators, can fail and not get judged, right? Because if we are comfortable with that place, then we will take risk. But here, here's the catch. Do not take it to be that you allow them to only do things that are comfortable with. Challenge them, right? But if they fail, it's okay. So let them be comfortable. And so at the end of the day, for parents, mentors, and um, teachers, your only thing to do is to show them a direction, suggest to them a direction, right? And let them go on it, walk in par with them, and at the end of the day, if they fail, if they fail give them a hand and get them, get them back up. And so, remember, coming back to the Imagine Cup, when I returned from uh, my second round from New York in 2011, remember I had this epiphany that I wanted to you know, create change using technology. And so, I decided that you know, I want to make Tara available to everyone in the world. And so, I was working hard at it. And like every other Singaporean son, I received the letter, the pink letter that states you need to go to the army. Yes. So for two years, work on Tara slowed down. And in that two years, another company came along, built a similar solution. They rolled it out. They got into market, got their clinical trials done. And then we were left behind. And it really honestly devastated me. I was depressed for a while. But then, and this is a lesson nobody taught me, right? That, and it's perhaps the most important one, that when it comes to innovation for a cause, it doesn't matter if you roll that solution out or the guy next to you, right? In fact, it's an obligation that you find a solution. If you find something that's worth changing the world, it's your job to tell the world about it and let it take its course, right? And so I did that. I, I accepted it. I decided to shelf Tara, and I started to work on something else. And today, I am working on uh, bringing courses to students in my school, SMU. And uh, what I realized was uh, during my first few weeks in school, I met a lot of enterprising, entrepreneurial students who had brilliant ideas, you know, ideas that could change the world. And I asked them, why aren't you doing it? And they said, you know, I, don't, I might not have the skills. I lack the confidence. And then when you dissect it, you, you realize that, you know, that skill can be imparted very easily. So why isn't anyone doing that? And so I decided to bring external organizations into my school to run workshops that will give the students the skill sets required to take your ideas from ideation to creating your first prototype to changing the world. And just like everyone else here, I, just like you, I don't have any clue where this journey will take me to. But like uh, there's this philosopher, Lao Tzu, he once said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So I would invite you to find your journey of a thousand miles and join me in taking your first step towards creating the change you want to see. Thank you.